Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 2, The Nightlands. Um, just like last week, I'm going to do a non-spoiler section of this review and then switch over to, you know, the book reader perspective. Uh, but I'll pinpoint when I'll, um, I'll just say when I'm going to switch over. Um, and if you haven't read the books, uh, I would probably suggest don't read the comments. Uh, if you want to talk about it with me, at least message me. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, this was a solid episode. I thought as good as the first one. It was a little different than the first one, as it didn't have as many big moments. So the first one was stronger in that sense. I mean, you know, it didn't have a huge massacre of children. Um, but, uh, or like, you know, the Rob scene with Jamie. Uh, but it was more focused this week, because it didn't have all the characters in it. Um, which I said they were gonna do, and they did. Uh, there was no Rob, no Catelyn, no Jamie, no Sansa, no Joffrey, and no Bran, you know, no Winterfell at all. So um, yeah, so they, you know they're gonna narrow all that. They're gonna do that week by week. I heard next week Daenerys isn't in it. Um, neither is Stannis, Melisandre, or Davos. So uh, we'll be focusing on other things. Um, so yeah, I have no problem with that as long as you know the characters that are in the episode are doing something interesting. Uh, I don't have no problem if they're gonna let somebody sit out. Um, but anyway, uh, speaking of, I guess, Daenerys sitting out next week, I'll just start with her this week and what happens over uh, across the Narrow Sea. Because uh, really it was just like a one scene. And um, she's still in a shithole. Uh, things have gotten a little bit worse that her... The blood rider from the... That she talked to last week, Ricaro, I think his name is... Um, talked to him... Sent him out, came back, uh, his head came back, um, and, uh, he was the one that was talking with Jorah last season about the armor, about having armor and everything like that, so, um, a quick death right away, uh, her situation's worse, there really wasn't anything else to really, not really much to say about the scene, I will say, because I saw the episode early, I was annoyed because I didn't know why it was called the Nightlands, because there were no subtitles for the Dothraki part that I downloaded. Uh, so I look like an idiot. Um, because I mentioned about the Nightlands is where the Dothraki go, and, you know, unless the bodies burn, the soul can't go there and everything. But, uh, anyway, uh, as far as Daenerys is, it's... She needs to get out of the Red Waste and her situation, like, kinda soon, which I can see they're gonna do. It's her not being in next week, and then she's probably gonna come back pretty big in the fourth episode and have a lot more to do. Um, because right now she's just kind of wandering and she's making making nothing but like empty empty threats. Um, you know she sounds convincing, but it just it's you can't even see it down the line. Something like this happen, like her being able to you know do something about it. You know she needs a drink of water first before she's got to worry about how she's gonna get revenge on people. Um, but yeah, I'll just leave uh, I'll leave that one at that. Uh. I guess I'll go... Yeah, we'll just go to King's Landing. Um, and at King's Landing, we had more of Tyrion just, like, running around, uh, speaking with Varys, you know, battling with Varys, battling with Cersei. Um, seeing with Varys was great. Um, both people threaten, threatening the other one without just completely threatening them. Well, Tyrion actually does say, I'll throw you in the sea. Um... But it's nice to see the dynamic that it's not going to be the same thing like last year. That it's not—he's not Ned Stark like he said. Uh, he'll give as much as he gets, and um, so that's great. Um, the stuff with Littlefinger in the brothel—I heard people were really like annoyed uh, with one with too much sex, which everyone seems to always complain about uh, with this show more than the uh, the violence, as always. Um, Although the thing with him wiping the, uh, the, uh, the come off the, uh, the prostitute and then having the guy make out with her, that was pretty nasty. Although it made pretty much everyone I watched it with laugh out loud. Um, it's kind of really just the, uh, and the whole conversation with Roz with Littlefinger, people were saying, why are we just listening to another monologue of this? I kind of think they did it because of what happened last week with the, um, you know, with the massacre at the baby, they probably wanted to see, like, how Littlefinger would react to it, and he just doesn't give a shit. He's just like, oh, yeah, that was poorly handled. You know, doesn't even know the woman's name. Um, basically just tells Roz, like, yeah, if you don't get your shit together, you're gonna, you know, I'm gonna give you over to someone else. And it was almost implied that, um, they mentioned last season that someone likes fresh corpses. 
and uh, he was almost when he was talking about the the other uh, girl that he let someone else take her and try to make her happy. I almost thought he was thinking about uh, they were mentioning like that person um, from last season where they were saying that uh, someone likes fresh you know cadavers. Uh, yeah, but whatever. He's uh, he's all he's still a shit. And also, I think people maybe were feeling a little sympathy for him last week because of what Cersei did to him, and they just wanted to hammer home the point. Like, listen, don't don't bother. Um, so I think that maybe that's why that scene was in there. People were complaining. How about something with Rob or Jamie or Sansa or something like that instead of this long scene? But you know, like I like I said, they're not going to put Sansa or someone else in unless they're going to give them something substantial to do. And I guess they couldn't really work it out to do anything that way, so they gave, you know, Littlefinger something to do. Yes, I'm annoyed that Roz has had more screen time than, like, Catelyn and Sansa combined. Uh, that's, you know... But, um... We'll see where, what it, where it goes with her. Um... But that, that's what I thought with that scene. Um... The scene with Tyrion and Cersei... Oh, first I'll go with Tyrion and Slint. That was, that was just pretty good. And making Bronn, you know, city commander. That was just all... That was just... It was fun to watch the guy get, you know, what he deserves. Watch somebody on the show who sucks get what they deserve. Um, which is rare. Um, and the scene with Cersei... I, I gotta say, like, Lena Headey is, is, is just really doing so well. Her chemistry with Peter Dinklage is great. The, um, the way I was able to almost feel sympathy for Cersei while just, like, not liking her... Um, was, uh, was pretty good. She, uh, you know, she's just so cruel to Tyrion, but you can see that she's just, she's hanging on by a thread with everything. And, um, you know, if they could just, like, join together, things would be so much better, but they just, they won't. Uh, but anyway, it was a great scene. Uh, let's see. Let's just head up the, go up the King's Road, I guess, to Arya, who had the light-hearted stuff this week. Um... I like they very quickly got the gold cloaks on the road to meet them. It you know took care of the cliffhanger from last week right away. Uh, it's nice that they're moving fast. Um, the the banter with her and Gendry and Hot Pie and Lamy that was just I mean when they said armor like ten times, uh, it got funnier each time. Uh, and everything with him with the whole Milady thing and her pushing him and everything like that it was nice. Plus getting to meet Jock and uh, Hagar was great. He pretty yeah. I'll I'll mention him more in the the book, uh, the spoiler section, but uh, it was just awesome. It was awesome to see her again. It was just a nice like witty, lighthearted section, which again the show needs to be funny, because it's so damn depressing, all the time. So uh, I loved all that stuff. Um, switch over to Theon. Yeah, all right. We'll go over to Theon. Who uh, I gotta say, with the Iron Islands, when I saw them in the map in the beginning, I loved seeing like the bridges and everything like that. It just looked great. Um, the there was a one point where um, I realized how just awesome the show is. Is when he was riding with uh, his sister. Um, it was just gorgeous shots of the landscape, the great CGI work that was being done, the music was swelling, everything was all working, and then they cut to the inside set where the set looked gorgeous, the costumes were great, you know, the acting was great, like, everything just, like, came together in, that, like, one section when they were riding up to, you know, Pike, and then cutting to the scene with Theon and his father. It just, the show is just so well done. It was just, like, a little, like... Uh, moment where I just realized just, you know, how just really good this is. Um, actor plays his father was brilliant, just menacing. The whole scene, I thought that was my favorite scene of the episode. Um, of course, I knew that his sister was his sister. Um, so that wasn't like a big surprise to me or anything, but um, still really good. I love the scene. Um, it introduced the Greyjoys really, really well and uh, set up the Theon's arc this year really, really well. Um, my favorite part of the episode. Uh, moving over to Stannis and Melisandre and Davos. Uh, Davos, uh, Liam, Cun Liam Cunningham asserted himself so much more this week. He didn't have as much screen time in the first week, but you know, I was watching him this week and I was like, oh yeah, there's Davos. Um, and uh, just again, just more just like witty banter and more talking about like religion. Uh, you know, just fascinating subjects and 
just you know just good dialogue talking about it. Um, Melisandre and, and Stannis uh, literally fuck Westeros on the uh, on the table, and uh, that's you know I like it when you see symbolism that's so obvious yet you you know are almost proud that the writers were able to think of it uh, with that with all like the pieces falling off and everything. By the way, Carice Van Houten is is uh, I think amazing as Melisandre. She almost brings like a vulnerability to it that I really haven't thought about. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, all right, then I guess I just move up to John in the Wall because uh, that's where we ended the episode. Uh, Ghost looks better than Grey Wind, and maybe it's the white on white. Um, but. Uh, I love Sam's... I love the conversation that they were having. Again, just a lighthearted stuff, like, Sam, what are you doing? Hello, Gilly, what are you doing? Um, was just really good. Um, and the episode's ending... You know, it ended so abruptly that I gotta say, the episode moved so fast that half hour... I looked down, and it was, like, already 9.30. I was like, are you kidding? And when I looked down again, it was already 9.50. I could not believe the episode moved by that fast, and that's that's just fantastic. Um, so I love the episode. I'll stop that. This I'm already at 11 minutes. I'll stop that first half here, and I'll talk about the spoiler stuff now. Um, so yeah, uh, shut it off if you don't want to know anything. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, as far as changes go, I'll just redo this again. Uh, Daenerys. People were pissed off that they kill off Ricaro. Not like he's a main character. He's somebody in the background that she orders him to do something in the books. I have no idea where anyone's that annoyed with it. You know, they needed to do something with her. They, she can't just wander around. At least if she's wandering around, she's sitting on her ass doing nothing, that there's, you know, at least someone died uh, that we know. You know, something substantial has to happen. She'll get to Korth probably in episode four, seeing as she's going to sit out this week. So she better get to Korth because things can be really tedious after a while there. Uh, that's why they killed him off, at least I think, anyway. To give that section of the show a little bit of weight to it. Um, moving up to King's Landing, I love the change with uh, Bronn being um, Watch Commander over Slint. Uh, just for the fact that Bronn, later on in the books, he kind of just like drifts away. Like she, They mention him in the fourth one but he drifts away. This is a great, you know, way to keep him around. It's just, I think it's a brilliant move. And I love the, Jerome, uh, was it Flynn? He's great. So keeping him around, I'm all for it. Um, people are also upset that Joffrey is the one that gave the order, not Cersei. I said this last week. Cersei is having no problem being a complete bitch for people to not like her. Um, she doesn't have to be a monster like Joffrey. It doesn't have to go that way. There can be levels of, like, evil on this show. Um, so I don't mind that change with Joffrey ordering the, the killing. Um, but, uh... Yeah, that was, that was all fine. Uh... All the Arya stuff. Uh, Jock and Hagar, he, like, won me over two lines in. I was like, yep, there he is, right from the, you know, I thought it was great. Uh, so I'm looking forward to where that goes. Um, I know I'm going through this fast, but I don't want this to be, you know, a 25-minute thing here. Um, so I like that stuff. Um, uh, let me see. Moving over to, I guess, Pike. Um, oh, yeah, first, the, the Littlefinger stuff. Again, people were pissed off about Roz having more screen time. I'm a little annoyed about that myself, but... Um, they gotta keep Littlefinger in it. They gotta keep him around. Because obviously we know how important he eventually becomes. So, uh, Let's see, let's see. Okay, Pike, the whole thing with Yara. It was Asha, now it's Yara. Yes, that does bother me. Does it bother me more than it should? Definitely. Does it really have to anything to do with the quality of the show? Not at all. So it's going to slightly annoy me. And that's it. Um, again, people were pissed off that she doesn't look anything like she's described in the book. In the book, I'm pretty sure, I thought she has, like, short black hair, and she just, I don't know. She just looks really, like, dirty in the show, but looks like her father. Um, I thought the actress was fine. 
Uh, I thought she got it across really, really well. Everyone, you know, trolled the shit out of Theon like I knew they were going to. That was, you know, that worked out for me. Um, I managed to sympathize with him all the while knowing he's going to do some awful stuff in, you know, the weeks ahead. So, uh, just again, well done by the show on that. Dragonstone, first of all, everything with Davos, I love that he's now, you know, he's asserted himself. Because, again, last week he didn't have a lot of screen time. This week he was just, you know, right there. And, um, he made me see, like, the Davos from the book, or at least this, you know, this version of it. Um, so that was good. And also Salador San, the pirate. Um... He, he was great right away, right away, right away. He, again, another one, took two lines, and already I thought he was, you know, just just really well cast. Uh, idiots, some idiots have problems that they cast someone like Black, but, you know, again, those people were idiots. Uh, that really doesn't matter. Um, like I said, he was the character two, two lines in, so I don't know what those people, people have problems. Um... As far as Mel and Stannis having sex, another thing, like, listen, how do you think you get a shadow baby? We all know Stannis, the night that they, that the shadow baby thing happens, he, like, blacks out, has, like, a nightmare, and the next day he looks like shit, because it's his, I get, like, it wasn't, imp it was implied they had sex, now it's implied that they, now they're saying that, hey, they had sex, they made a baby, she says, I'm gonna bring you a son, what do you think that is? Um... So yeah, so, and people thought it made Stannis too submissive, but, you know, it's just, he also wants to win. You know, he's going to be very rigid, and then, but he, you know, he's got to try something, I guess. Um, so yeah, people I think are complaining just way too much about changes without really thinking them through and thinking the reasons why. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess last again at the wall. I don't remember John seeing a White Walker in the book. Maybe he did. I don't remember it. Um, I know he finds like the the dragon glass. I thought that's what he what he found. I I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, there was no real changes. I guess with that, I like that they moved Sam and and, and Gilly right away. Um, you know, because we know uh, what's going on there. Although I, I gotta admit, I was just thinking about their sex scene later on, and uh, yeah, kind of ruined the moment for me. Thinking of the 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 fat pink mast. You know what I'm talking about. You read the book. I'm not gonna go further than that. Really, kind of ruined the scene. Thanks, George, for that image. Um. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Uh, I'll be back next week with uh, the next review. Uh, I will be going to Professor Tom's a bar in New York City for episode four, um, precisely because the whole the the bar is showing the show, precisely because you get a free drink if someone dies in episode four, someone will be dead, someone will be die uh, dying. So uh, yeah. Uh, all right, that's it. Later, guys.